Hello and welcome to another edition of the e-commerce Odyssey podcast. Today we're going to talk to Lauren Schwartz about um, Lauren Schwartz from The Loft Three Two Five, and we're going to talk about all things TikTok and specifically about how businesses can use TikTok to their advantage. So, Lauren, imagine that I've just come off Mars, I've just come from the planet Mars, and I don't know anything <laughs> about. It. Well, maybe imagine I know what the internet is, but what is TikTok? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, it it's a pla- it's obviously an engagement platform. So it's a platform where you essentially go to be entertained. Um, it's very different from obviously Facebook and Instagram in that people who are on TikTok are consuming content at a much faster pace. Um, and they really just want to sit and be entertained. I mean, essentially, that's that's what it is. TikTok is your entertainment platform. <laughs> okay, so what what kind of what kind of content do people create on TikTok? So, I mean, a lot of brands and people are really just. I mean, it's everything. There's, you know, DIY. There's. But no, no, is it videos? Is it video? Is it text? Oh, vid- is it... yeah, videos. Yeah. Imagine videos I'm only. from Mars. Imagine I'm from right. Mars. Right. <laughs> So it's videos only. So it's just all, yeah, video consumer content. And how long are the videos? Um, It depends. Most of them are less than 15 seconds. Um, And again, they're all genres. So from cooking to dancing to DIY to tech to, I mean, anything. It's anything that you can consume um, in a video that, is a, you know, quick, a short, like short attention span. I think people think that TikTok is just only like a dancing platform, but there's actually (laughs) a ton, a ton that's on it, uh, a ton that you can actually watch and consume um, while you're, while you're on the. What a success. So if you, if you're a, you do a video, um, how do people interact with the video? Can they click through to another website or is it, how does it work? Yeah. So, you know, as you're scrolling through it and, you know, you see something that pops up, you can, you know, like it, engage with it. And then you can essentially click onto their profile where they have other links that you can view and kind of dive more into. Um, Obviously there are ads on TikTok that you can essentially click on, you know, click on to shop now to go to another, you know, go to the website to actually purchase the product. So it is, I mean, there are ads, there is content, but yes, you can, you can essentially look at everything within the platform, but then click out to go and see other products. So am I right in saying that it's a bit like in, in other social media platforms, you have the organic TikTok and you have your paid, you have paid TikTok. You do, but with paid TikTok, it, it still looks like a TikTok. So I think that's kind of the difference when you're thinking like paid and organic, like with on TikTok, when you're actually on the platform and consuming the content. If you're making ads for TikTok, you want to make it look like it's a regular TikTok piece of content. So, making sure that you're staying up with the trends, making sure that you're, you know, staying up with the content that's being produced on TikTok so that as someone's scrolling, it looks like you're just watching a TikTok, but then it has at that little, you know, bottom corner a shop now or learn more. So, if you're scrolling through it and you don't know that it's an ad, then you did, you've done a really good job of creating a solid piece of content for TikTok. <laughs> okay, so presumably, can we can we what? So first of all, what kind of business features does TikTok have? So it has everything as far as what you would normally get on like a Facebook Ads Manager. So you can still run campaigns, you can still run, uh, you know, lead generation, you could still run. Um, you know, audience testing, all that kind of stuff. It's, it, it literally is like the same similar platform to Facebook as far as like running paid acquisition. It's just a different channel. So like I said, it's, it's similar, but different. So with, with them, um, okay. So let's just, perhaps we can talk about, about organic TikTok and then we'll talk about paid TikTok. So if I'm a business and I want to create a TikTok bit of paid, so a bit of, bit of, bit of um, organic TikTok, what mm-hmm. process should I go through and what can I, what what is what process do I go through? Um, what does success look like, and how do I measure how do I measure success? Yeah, so with organic TikTok, the first thing that I would do is I would look at what's trending. So when you first go onto the app, there's a whole section of what's trending. So it's trending sounds, trending um, you know, trending sounds, trending like topics, hashtags, all that kind of stuff. So I would start going through and just seeing like, okay, what's actually trending on TikTok right now? 
And as you're kind of scrolling through, you can essentially like make notes, save them and see how you could apply that to your business. So if there's certain things that, you know, someone's talking about for a product, you know, uh, one of the big things was TikTok made me buy it. That's a huge hashtag and it translates for paid and organic. Um, but something like that, you can look and see how people are talking about products, how people are talking to the consumer and essentially just start making notes of like, okay, this is what is trending. This is what we can do. And then translate that into your business to make it more of an organic style TikTok and really just start to like build on the organic of trends, audio, um, and what's really happening within the app. Cause as you start doing that, you're going to start being seen on the for you page more. You're going to be starting to oh, the for you page. Sorry. What's that? Yeah. So <laughs> within TikTok, you have the people you follow and then the for you page. So the for you oh, the, page, literally for you. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So like things, as you start to like engage with the app more, the for you page is going to start giving you new people to follow new, like, you know, trends, like if you are liking these things or interacting with these things, then it's basically going to build out a whole like for you page where you can scroll through and find new audiences, new people, new, you know, new people to follow. Um, and basically just, you could start to build your account that way. So the algorithm teaches you that, you know, it's, this is who you are liking. So this is what I'm going to serve you more of. So we're slave um, to the algorithm as ever. Yeah, we're just, but, we're I mean, just doing it, it like, says. Computer it's says. Always, computer says do this. It's always yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, any app or yeah. Where, where does it? Where does it? Okay, so could I, if I, you know, I, I, as a business, create some organic content? Would I be looking? What would success look like? Would it just be views? Is it kind of brand building, or is it literally would people click through to my, um, my post, my my product, and buy it? It would definitely, it would be your engagement. So it's people that are interacting with your posts. So are you getting a lot of impressions? Are you getting people, you know, a lot of comments, a lot of likes, like if you're getting people who are actually engaging with your organic TikTok, then that's a good way to measure how you're doing. So you can have one post that maybe the engagement is, you know, 300, and then you can get another post, you know, that you post organically that will get you know, 12,000. So it, it just kind of depends like how you're essentially positioning it. And, so, and it's a lot of trial and error. Like you have to kind of go on as a brand, look and see what trends are trending. And then once you kind of start to figure that out and figure out, you know, what, what people want to see from your content, then you can kind of start to build a better organic strategy of, okay, well, this is starting to trend really well. This is what people are going for from my account. This is when I'm going to start kind of leaning more into and then really just testing and seeing like what will get so, people to so, engage. Again, is it, so you what you're saying is this, you're not saying that people are clicking through to a site you're saying it's about build it so it's about brand building it's about building awareness for a brand it's not about for making or, sales directly well, for organic or, organic that's okay. what let's, it's doing okay let's talk about let's talk about paid search then so i want to create a paid search campaign how do i go about it what are the options and how do i know if it's worked Again, so it's testing, um, really working with, um, you know, seeing what's trending on, you know, within Facebook, or I'm sorry, within TikTok, um, and essentially taking the trends and building it around your product. So if you're a brand and you have a specific product, or if you have, you um, mostly it's about a product. So if you're looking to build that specific product, then taking the trends and putting that towards your product and then getting people to click, obviously um, it's mostly click. So people, you want people to click through to your website. So mm -hmm. essentially that's what you're trying to, to gauge as far as like how people are getting to your website, what, you know, are people actually going to your website purchasing? Um, but mostly it's clicks that you want to see who is clicking on your ad. Okay. So it's driving traffic. So what would you say is a good performance? I mean, what kind of, um, cost of sale or, you know, as a percentage would, would you think is a good, is achievable on TikTok? I mean, I think it depends. Um, you know, <laughs> right now it's been, I mean, I think from like Facebook to TikTok, um, if you're, you know, if you're getting a low, uh, CPA within, you know, like less than a hundred dollars, um, obviously that's, that's huge. 
Um, if you're within like the $20, $30 range, like, you know, again, your CPAs are, are pretty good. Um, and I would say that's probably like the amount of money that you're spending with the cost of people actually clicking through, that would be what you're kind of measuring as far as like your percentage. So like if you're getting low, low spend on your clicks, then you're, you know, essentially doing pretty good, like you're doing good. And then obviously getting people to purchase. So, you know, if you have a really high click through rate, like over a two or three, and then you're having you know, websites, percent, percent okay. yeah. yeah. Um, which obviously is very high, but if you, you know, are achieving those and obviously your click through rate is, is pretty strong. And then if you're having, you know, a lot of purchases, then obviously the ad is doing what it, it needs to be doing. So am I right saying, so you're saying that, that a good, if, if $30 is a good, um, cost of uh, like cost for acquisition, then presumably you're going to be wanting to sell a dollar for not a product for north of a hundred dollars to make that worthwhile. So is it is it really that these dollars these products need to be reasonably high ticket to make this work? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I think right now just with like CPAs, um, they're pretty high across the board with Facebook and Instagram. I mean, I think it depends. Again, it's it kind of depends on your product too, like your cogs, like what exactly, you know, is the price of your, your product? What is the price of, um, you know, the amount of money you're spending? Like there's a lot of things that go into it in order to essentially get the achievements that you need. Um, so if you're, if you're spending a lot of money on TikTok and getting a low CPM, I mean, I think it's one of those things where, you know, it's, it's kind of like, a, it's just a game of figuring out like what exactly is going to be the right amount to spend. Are these ads working as far as, you know, if it's a low ticket price, lo low ticket item, but then a high CPA, like high CPA, then you're, it's probably not going to work because you, essentially you're is not. It, is it charged on a, on a cost per click basis or a CPM basis? Uh, it, again, it depends. It depends on kind of how you're setting up the account and how you're, you know, what are, what are you measuring within the account? So is it, are you measuring CPAs, CPMs? Are you measuring MER? Are you measuring ROAS? Like, I think it just kind of depends on what you're measuring as far as your brand goes. So uh, it's just. And then what I mean I, is what is it, what are, what are the charging options? So on, on Google ads, it's normally, um, you get charged per click. So when you when you when you've got a TikTok ad, you charge per impression or you charge per click? Uh usually per click. Okay. And again, it kind of yeah, it, again, it kind of depends on what what you're testing for. But usually per click, cost cost per click. Okay. So what kind of creative is required for TikTok? Um, so for TikTok, it's very much content creation. So utilizing people who understand the platform, utilizing people who understand the trends, um, and really making sure that they have content that's engagement worthy. So if you're going to, if you're a brand and you want to work with a content creator, or if you're a brand and you want to, you know, kind of shoot the content yourself, making sure that you're, again, you're looking at the trends, you're looking at how people are shooting content on TikTok to essentially take that styling and make it for your own brand. So really it's things that look super native to the platform, um, working with content creators that understand the platform and you need to make it look not like an ad. So it has to, like, again, it has to be very native, native worthy. So it shouldn't be too polished. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I would say like high production type things most people know that it's an ad, especially on TikTok, because as you're looking through the feed, everything looks so organic. And then if you have a very nice, like polished, high-end looking ad, you're going to know it's an ad and you're probably just going to scroll right past it. So you need to work really hard to make it look cheap. <laughs> no, I don't think you have to work really hard to make it look cheap, but I mean, sometimes, yeah. I mean, like, I think it just depends like <laughs> what you have, but yeah, I think just but more native it looks can you give me some examples okay so what, what i mean by what kind of creative is required so you need a video you need you need a video and you need text a uh, click through text and stuff like that what is what is the uh, what is the, the actual assets that are required to run a campaign so obviously video assets but i think the biggest thing with tiktok is that you want to get people to stop watch your video for longer than three seconds and so we like to call like a hook 
So what are, what's a good hook that you can get people to, to stop on your, um, video. And a lot of times it's, you know, a lot of people think it's, you know, different, um, like oddly satisfying things where it's, you know, just like weird stuff where (laughs) I don't know, I'm trying to think of like one, um, like one could be that I've seen recently that was an ad, but it was this like boba that was talking about, you know, blackheads for people. And it was someone like on a green screen, but like, you know, but that sort of thing where you're like, Oh, what, why is there a big boba thing on the screen? Stuff like that. Like those are good hooks. Like you need to get people to stop and just see like what the heck is going on. Um, Another trick that we've kind of been doing is if you have a lot of text on the screen, because people need to actually stop and read it, you actually get longer engagement times and longer video viewing times if you have a lot of text on the screen and you can have kind of just a random video in the background. But if you have a lot of text, people have to actually stop, read it, and then it makes your video time go up higher, which okay. then is all is obviously like a good metric um, as well. So I think it's just like, it depends, but anything that can grab someone's attention quickly, um, making sure that you're again, keeping people entertained. Those are the types of videos that you want within the account so that people will continue to, to watch your videos. Okay. So can you perhaps give me an example? So, you know, if you were, uh, you know, perhaps give an example of a business you've worked with and how they went to create the, the advertise the campaign and how it works. Yes. Yeah. So we have, um, a couple of brands that we work with, but one is a web-based service for instance. So I'll use them for an example. Um, But essentially what we've been doing for them that has been getting the most engagement is we've been taking trending audios that have been on TikTok. And that's the audio, not the video. The audio. Yes. So how do you mean, how do you find the audio? Because it's a video platform. So what do you mean by the audio? Well, so there's video, but there's also audio within the video. And so, yeah, so you can actually look at the, you can look at trending audios of what, like what's actually trending. And then you can essentially take those, they have licensed and non-licensed ones. So you can take the non-licensed ones and put those in your ads. And essentially, because more people are going to search for that audio, your ad will pop up within their feed because of the audio trend. So that's like, so you're just like, how does that work? Because I know nothing about (laughs) TikTok, right? So I thought that people just scroll videos. So do people scroll effectively scroll the audio or is it just the audio is, is it just people use the same audio on multiple videos and you can search for that audio? It's both. So they're looking at videos, they're looking at audio, they're looking at hashtags. Like it's a lot that people are consuming within it. But as you start to scroll the platform, you'll start to see trending audios. Like, you know, as you're scrolling the videos, you'll start seeing, you'll start hearing the sounds that people are using. And then you can start to know like, okay, this is obviously like a trending audio. And then you can take that audio, put it into your ad, um, the non-licensed ones, because you have to obviously, you have to pay for the licensed ones, but you can take that audio, put it into your ad. And sometimes it's just, you know, you sitting there. Um, so for instance, the, one of the ads we did, Uh, It's for a health brand and we just did different images of, you know, different things that she was eating. And it was just like a quick, you know, transition of all these different things she was eating with text on the screen and the trending audio. And that's one of our top performers right now. So it's, it's the way that you're kind of shooting the content. It has to be quick cuts, um, you know, quick text, if you're going to be utilizing it, things like that. Like those are the types of things that are, that are working right now. Okay. So what about me? Do you work with creators at all? Or is it, uh, is it, is it just using natively using the, using the advertising system? Or Yeah. So I have content creators who work specifically with me. Um, and so we essentially, myself and my other creative strategists, we actually will be pulling trends. We, we essentially pull trends on like a weekly basis and we will send them over things to shoot, scripts to kind of work off of. And then our content creators will go and actually shoot that content specifically for are these the influ- Are these influencers or are they just people who make content? They're just, yeah, just content creators. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, that, that's interesting. So so it, it, it's all about capturing, it's having short, something short, which is is 
um, similar to other stuff, which is on TikTok, which has a, a, a hook in it, it uses and uses trending information to get a get a message across. Yep, exactly. God, I've learned something <laughs> about TikTok. So what kind of what kind of um, what kind of businesses does TikTok work work best for? I mean, really all businesses, you know, there's a lot of brands on there that say, oh, I can't do TikTok. Like it doesn't work for me, but it's, it really is for every business. I mean, I think it's just a way that you have to position your brand and it's the way that you talk to the consumer on TikTok is just different than how you would talk to them through obviously Google or Facebook and Instagram. Like you just have to, you have to be on there knowing that you're going to be talking to a different audience, someone who's going to be consuming content quicker and wanting to see things at a much, you know, faster pace. But is it, what's the demographic of TikTok? Presumably you don't want to be advertising hearing aids on TikTok. I mean, you can, I, because <laughs> like, it's probably a bad example, you know what I mean? It, it's a young yeah. audience, isn't it? So it's going to be young. It's going to be. But it's actually not. And I think that's the misconception that so many people, TikTok is that everyone thinks like, oh, it's just, you know, it's a younger audience. They're only in their twenties, but a lot of, you know, older people are actually watching TikTok. I mean, you know, my dad actually, he's going to be 70 and he has, I mean, he's on TikTok, you know, he's not necessarily posting videos, but he's on it, you know? So it's like, I think it's just, it, it depends. Like, I think, again, there's this misconception that it's only for a younger generation, but you know, it's, so many people are on it. Like I said, I, I just don't think maybe the older generation just isn't posting as much, but there are older people on there that are, you know, posting content. So I think like making, you know, you can definitely advertise to anyone on TikTok um, because someone's going to watch it. And even if, if it is a younger generation, if you're, you know, if you are selling to that younger audience, the younger audience has parents, you know, they can obviously look at the content and say like, oh, like I could give this to my mom or dad or my, you know, grandma or whatever, and essentially, you know, buy the product for them. So I don't necessarily think you should like count yourself out for older audiences because there are older demographics on there. Okay. So what about, I mean, I want a business that is a, when a retailer, so we have several thousand items, um, we like kind of programmatic things that mean we don't have to, you know, because we've got thousands of items. We sell across a big catalog. We don't do too much of any one product. We don't own any brands. Would TikTok work for us or is it only really for brand owners? Um, You could definitely do, you could definitely do that. Um, I would say with something with a larger uh, catalog, I would focus just more on your best sellers because again, like if you have 5,000 products, like that's a lot of products, obviously you can't necessarily make content for 5,000 products. But if you have like a core set of products that you know does really well, then you could essentially take those products and sell them to a new audience because essentially TikTok would be your new audience. So I would focus mostly like on your top sellers for TikTok. Okay. Well, it's been very interesting. I've learned a lot about TikTok. I think I might, because I, I I just go onto it and I see, you know, cats, um, people jumping into pools, pranking people, stuff like that. Maybe I should take another look. So look, I've got my last question for you. But I like to ask a silly, fairly random question at the end. What are you nerdy about? Yes. What's your so, thing? Yeah, um, we were talking about it before, but yeah, Shit's Creek. Um, love Love that show and definitely am, am very nerdy about that show. Yeah, so you've got like a kind you got like this kind of thing, but is this done on purpose? So you've got Shits Creek, lots of Shit Creek stuff. And then you've got yeah. some you've got some cost stuff. I don't know what that is. Is that some sort of product or something? Oh yeah, the stuff on the side. Yeah, that's actually the stuff that I shoot for my my clients. Oh right, okay. <laughs> so you got like some all product. Of their product. Product. There's a bit of product yeah. placement. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a messy product laser, but yes, it's definitely there. And I, I'm digging, I'm digging the jumper as well. You got this kind of rainbow pink jump, rainbow pink jumper. Oh, they... <laughs> yeah. So it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Lauren, thanks very much for your time. It's lovely to hear about TikTok. Good luck for the future. Yeah, thank you so much, Trevor. <laughs>